Over the last several weeks, there's been a ton of media swirl around the US dollar potentially losing its most dominant or prominent reserve currency status across the globe. But is this something that we really need to worry about? And that is a question that we will attempt to address in this video. More specifically, we'll cover off on the following topic areas. What is a reserve currency? Why has the US dollar become the de facto reserve currency or the most significant reserve currency in the world? Does it seriously matter all that much to be the most dominant or significant reserve currency? What would happen if the US dollar were to lose its reserve currency status? And lastly, is it really possible that the US dollar may lose its reserve currency status? It in simplest terms, a reserve currency is a currency that is held in significant quantities by governments and institutions as part of their foreign exchange reserves. These reserves are used to facilitate international trade and finance transactions and are often held in the form of government bonds or other financial instruments denominated in the reserve currency. The most widely held reserve currency in the world is of course the US dollar, which has been dominant reserve currency since the end of World War II. Reserve currencies are generally considered to be stable and trusted stores of value, and their widespread use in international transactions can help to promote global economic stability. However, the dominance of a single reserve currency can also create economic imbalances and dependency, and there have been those who have called for an alternative reserve currency to reduce the reliance on the US dollar. So now that we've established that the US dollar is the most dominant reserve currency, the question really becomes, why has the US dollar become this de facto reserve currency of the world? The US dollar is the most widely held reserve currency for several reasons, including the size and stability of the US economy. The US economy is the largest in the world and has been relatively stable over the past several decades. This has made the US dollar a reliable store of value and a very popular currency for international transactions. Secondly, the depth and liquidity of the US financial markets. The US financial markets are some of the largest and most liquid in the world, which makes it easy for foreign investors to buy and sell US dollars and US denominated assets. Thirdly, the role of the U.S. in global trade and finance. The U.S. is a major player in international finance and trade, and the U.S. dollar is often used as the currency of choice for these transactions. Next, it really comes to the strength and influence of the U.S. political and military institutions. The U.S. has a strong and influential political and military presence in many parts of the world, which has helped to maintain confidence in the U.S. dollar and its role as a reserve currency. But with all that said, who cares, right? I mean, does it seriously matter who has the most significant reserve currency in all the land? Well, quite frankly, there are benefits. There are significant benefits, particularly if you're a resident of the United States and are actively utilizing the US dollar. For example, being a reserve currency can reduce transaction costs for international trade and finance, since it is often used as a common currency for settling transactions. This can make it easier and cheaper for countries to trade or to conduct trade and financial transactions with one another. Additionally, countries that issue a reserve currency can often borrow at lower interest rates since their currency is in high demand. This can be especially beneficial for the country's government as it can help reduce the cost of financing its debt. Now we can do a separate video on how amassing large quantities of debt can be a bad thing, but maybe we'll save that for a different video. The use of a reserve currency can also help to promote global economic stability by providing a common currency for international transactions. This can help reduce the risk of currency fluctuations and the inevitable financial crisis that comes out of an unstable currency. And of course, being a reserve currency can increase a country's global influence and prestige since it is seen as a reliable and stable currency. This can give the country greater clout in international relations and financial negotiations. Now, most people may think or may not think twice about these benefits, but it becomes more meaningful when it's viewed in terms of managing inflation or the ease in traveling to other countries and the US dollar typically being the stronger currency and the strength and usage of the US dollar certainly benefits large US corporations as well. In those terms, it hits home just a little bit more. What would happen if the US dollar were to lose its status of the most significant reserve currency in all the land? 
Well, it's, it's really hard to say since it's not really quite happened, but we can certainly look at the past. Prior to the US dollar, the British pound was the most significant reserve currency. When it lost its status to the US dollar, the currency experienced wild fluctuations, borrowing costs substantially increased, and the UK lost its global influence. But most of these things were inevitably short-term in nature. I mean, look around us now. It is possible to stabilize the economy. The British pound is now one of the strongest currencies out there, if not the strongest currency in the world. So then, with all of that said, is it possible for the US dollar to lose its most significant reserve currency status? Well, I guess anything is really possible, but it's also extremely unlikely, and here's why. At this point, it is important to reflect and assess whether there are alternatives to dethroning the US dollar. For example, are there other economies that have the size and stability as the United States? Yes, it's true that the Chinese economy has grown massively over the last several decades to the point of becoming the second largest GDP in the world, taking a backseat only to the US. But while it does have size, the question really becomes is, is it stable? Because the stability of the currency and the stability of the economy are significantly important to the stability of that local currency. One could easily argue with a significant amount of Chinese government influence on their largest businesses, as well as the control the country has exercised over its currency and its people, the stability of the economy is a significant question mark. Perhaps there are other currencies that could increase their promise such as the British pound or the Japanese yen. But the fact of the matter remains that these countries and their respective economies have their own set of challenges and from a global prominence standpoint are secondary or tertiary to the US dollar and the US economy in general. While countries may decide to trade and settle those trades in currencies other than the US dollar, it's almost impossible that they would consider completely moving away from the US dollar. I mean, think about it. China is the largest holder of US debt in the world. It's a testament to the robustness and stability of the US economy when the US's biggest rivals are holding its currency as an investment. Now more recently, there's all this hoopla about the BRICS currencies. The BRICS being the Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, basically getting together and essentially creating a new or unique currency that could potentially be utilized for global trade. Again, for all intents and purposes, this is just more hype and potentially more media nonsense as well. Firstly, some of the countries in this group have a strong dislike for one another. I mean, think about India and China. There is a border dispute between these two countries. Secondly, some of these countries have major economic issues. Think Russia with all of its sanctions and Brazil with all of its inflation. This leaves South Africa, and South Africa, quite frankly, is a very, very small economy. Yes, granted, you put all of these countries together, they do have a significant amount of GDP, but there is a significant amount of question with the business, as it relates to the stability of all of these nations from an economic standpoint as well as from a currency standpoint. Are some of these currencies actually free and can be easily traded upon? And so if you took these countries and combined their GDP and compared it against the US and its allies, they're obviously significantly smaller. So really, what does it all come down to or what's the bottom line? But simply, the US dollar will remain the dominant reserve currency for a while and there's very, very minimal risk to it since there aren't any worthwhile alternatives at this point in time. And that's really it. If you like the contents of this video, definitely like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one.